What's happening with bees? When people ask me about bees, they usually don't know exactly what bees are. They often think of the honey bee, basically because it gives us honey. The honey bee is only one of the many bee species, and it is quite special because it is managed by beekeepers. But there are many more wild bees. Some are big, others small, hairy, or shiny. Some have long antennae, others short antennae. Some have a red behind, some have a yellow behind. There are more than 20,000 different species of bees in the world. For context, there are twice as many bee species as bird species. Most live solitary lives rather than nesting in colonies with a queen, and they are crucial for plants. For example, some bee species are awesome at pollinating tomatoes, while others are good with rosemary, pears, or blackberries. Altogether, they allow plants to reproduce, including most of the crops that feed us. Unfortunately, many of them are disappearing. But why? Well, the problem is complex. The main cause is that we are destroying the places where they live. We have turned woods and grasslands into crop fields and cities where many wild species cannot survive. On top of this, we use pesticides on our crops, intoxicating the few species that can adapt to them. Climate change also affects them. For example, when temperatures rise, some species are forced to find cooler places to live. If they don't find them, they simply die. Also, we are moving many species around the world. Some of them bring new diseases, with devastating effects for native bees. We know that each of these things is causing some bee species to disappear. But when they happen simultaneously, the extinctions may multiply. What can we do? Well, many things. First, we need to better maintain our landscape by preserving natural areas. Also, we need to make our cities and crops more friendly for bees. For example, growing native flowers in them. We have to minimize pesticides, even avoid them if possible. We need to slow down global warming by reducing CO2 emissions, and that's not only for bees. Also, we have to be more careful to avoid moving animals indiscriminately around the world. Stopping bee decline is in our hands. In yours, too. Native bees are the most important pollinators on the planet. Without native bees, we lose we lose everything. We have about 200 species in the Bay Area. And this garden has most of those 200 species. <laughs> Just as you've probably heard by now that the honeybee is in decline, our native bee populations are also declining. Some um, on the verge of extinction and some have already gone extinct, especially bumblebees. And that's due to habitat loss, primarily, and of course pesticide poisoning. But habitat is the key. And so whatever urban gardeners can do to provide these oases of pollen and nectar-rich habitat forage for bees, the better our pop the healthier our populations will be. One thing you'll notice is that there are blooms of all different heights, colors, shapes, because our bees come in many, many sizes. They, they range from less than a quarter of an inch to uh, an inch and a quarter in the case of bumblebee queens and carpenter bees. We have t many, many tiny little sweat bees, and each of these bees um, has a preference for what kind of flower they'll forage on. or even a physical limitation. And then we have, we have plants that, that bloom all the way through spring through fall. We've also provided this artificial um, nesting block for leafcutter bees. And we have an old stump there, and we drilled it with holes. And that will also provide nesting opportunities for our wood nesting bees. But ground, leaving undisturbed ground, free from, if you'll notice, there's almost no mulch on our ground. Because ground nesting bees can't dig through a thick layer of mulch to get to the ground to, to excavate their nests. Since so many wild areas have been lost to industrial agriculture and suburban development, 
our, our gardens, our residential gardens, can provide uh, really an important well, resource. We've heard that in many parts of the world, the common honeybee is dying in huge numbers. To save those bees and help stop their deaths from affecting the multi-billion dollar agriculture industry, the world is looking to a place you'll find only in Canada. We're taking you to Newfoundland and Labrador, where bees are thriving. Vic Adopia explains why. This is the place to be if you're a beekeeper. The air here is sweet with the scent of honey. That's about as good as it gets for honey. These beehives are as productive as ever, but that's not the case in the rest of Canada, where bees died at an alarming rate this past winter. As everybody knows, bees are vital to, the, uh, to our food supply. And when you hear of beekeepers losing 30%, 50%, some even 90 percent other hives. Uh, it's very disturbing. The high bee mortality is blamed on the spread of mites that feed on honeybees. There's also growing evidence certain insecticides used on commercial crops could also be responsible. Commercial farming is relatively limited here, so Newfoundland remains a honeybee bastion. Being in Ireland, we don't have the pests and diseases that uh, the beekeepers have with the bees on the mainland. Our bees, therefore, have, are not fed any drugs, no medications whatsoever. And they are, for the most part, eating and foraging off uh, wildflowers. The honeybees in Newfoundland and Labrador are doing phenomenal. The province is carefully monitoring Newfoundland's bees for mites. So far, nothing. There's also a ban on importing any honeybees from outside Newfoundland. The restriction appears to be working, at least for now. And that's it for now, fingers crossed. I always say it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I'm always prepared for the phone call that says, we found it. But right now, because of the diligence of the beekeepers in this province, we have been able to avoid that. Yeah. While Newfoundland's honey industry is small, Head says the province could have a role in the long-term survival of the beleaguered bee. We've actually got the eye of a lot of uh, different jurisdictions around the world. They're very intrigued at the disease status we have here in this province. Head says there could be a day when Newfoundland supplies the world with healthy and happy honeybees. Vicodopia, CBC News, St. John's. If you have an idea for Only in Canada, we want to hear from you. Just go to our webpage, cbcnews.ca slash onlyincanada, to send us your ideas, photos, and videos.